All right, you might notice I'm all fancied up with my purple hair and my eyeliner, but today I had the best conversation with Melissa from Tailwind. We talked about um, what Pinterest is doing, what things we can do to help make our accounts better, what we can post, how we can post it, and then some super sneaky secrets from Tailwind she sprung on me that are going to make our lives so much easier. So this is my chit chat with Melissa from Tailwind. All right, guys, today we have Melissa from Tailwind and she's a friend friend. So I'm super excited to talk to her. She sent me a message and said they had done a ton of research on Pinterest and how pins are working. And if you're anything like me, you're probably bummed out about Pinterest right now. It's not a Tailwind problem. I think it's a Pinterest problem, but shh, don't tell them that. So. Melissa, you want to like tell us who you are in the real world and then she's going to do a presentation, but I'm going to butt in. Yeah, please butt in. You guys are kind of a guinea pig, actually. I haven't given this in its entirety yet. So hey, <laughs> we like that. You're you're my guinea pig. Uh, yeah, so I've been with Tailwind since 2012. I'm the other than our two co-founders, I've been here the longest. So I get to meet great people like Tara and get to talk to our members. Um, I My title, I think, is community manager. So- And you got a promotion, right? Because now I you did, have a yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I have someone working with me. Uh, it's not just me running our absolutely massive, crazy affiliate program, which I love, which works incredibly well for us, but- it was a as, lot for me. As it does for me, thank you. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now I get to do more stuff like this and have a little bit more freedom. I'm not just sucked into uh, my emails all day, every day doing, you know, essentially affiliate CS. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting to be out here. And yeah, I know Pinterest has been a little crazy lately. They've been changing a lot of things and kind of keeping us on our toes, to put it kindly. But they're making, you know, when you look at the reasoning why they're doing it, they're making these improvements because they love us and because they want us to succeed, but it can be kind of hard to navigate. And so we did a massive study, 20 million pens that were published between January and beginning of January and end of March or beginning of March, I think. So about two months of data so and you use, what works. Yeah. You use the Pinterest API and you suck the data in, right? And then yeah. you put it in a giant spreadsheet and people who understand math, not marketers, people who yep. understand math went through it and they gave us some good stats, right? Exactly. Yeah, and it wasn't me. I'm, <laughs> I'm super excited to hear this because I'm, I'm data driven, right? Like I do everything based on numbers and honestly, to be honest with you, me and my marketing bestie have been going, well, for Etsy, it does well. And we think it's because this is just our own, you know, theory is because they have an affiliate relationship with Etsy. Mm -hmm. And so they get affiliate commissions if people, I mean, it only makes sense. They're in business sense. to make money, or if it's not a straight affiliate, it's a company to company, you know, kind of thing. So for right. us, Etsy is still work. But for my blogs and stuff, I mean, I put something up. I'm literally only getting traffic from things from April of 2020 and older. That's That was like my cutoff date that they stopped seeing anything else I did. Yeah, a lot of people are seeing that. <laughs> and we have some tips to uh, kind of help hopefully juice that a little bit more, make it a, a little bit better. So, uh, I mean, if we're ready, I can... Sure. And in the meantime, while you're getting that ready, um, oh, the reason I'm talking to you guys about this is because Tailwind is a scheduler. So they're a Pinterest scheduler. You can schedule your pins. I think you can schedule your video pins. I think my one account has trouble, not with Tailwind, but with Pinterest approving them, all of them, not just Tailwind pins. Um, and you, so, so if you don't get Tailwind for anything but tracking your stats, Right, the stats you get from Pinterest are ridiculous. The stats you get from Tailwind are actually helpful. Now, when I say I didn't, I don't have any pins that work since April of 2020. I'm talking about like those big, you know, ten thousand in the first month and blah, blah blah. I'm still getting traffic from Pinterest on Artsy Fartsy Life. My um my Artsy blog 
it's a third of my traffic. So it's not like I can just go, see you later, Pinterest. But I don't want to spend the time to be um, like manual. I don't have time. Like I have children, I have dogs, I have cats, I have dementia mom, I have everybody. So I, um, I schedule my pins through Tailwind. That's who I use. Uh, there are going to be links. There will be, this is my affiliate disclosure. There will be an affiliate link to that. Um, but I wanted to get Melissa with all this data so that she could tell us so we can make some informed decisions. Yeah. And uh, I can't screen share. I think you have to... Oh. Turn it on for me, but I'm, I'm ready. Okay, participants, do you know where it is? Uh, I, I think you can make me a host. Can I make you a host? More. Make host. There we go. I think that should work. There you go. Okay, I am a host now. Perfect. Yes. So now I can start sharing my screen. You can see the the presentation before it's. Up. Okay. And so now can you see? I can. And I edit all these, like I edit every video I put up. So I'll just edit that crap out. Okay, perfect. All right. So what's working in 2021? We know we've heard, wow, I don't know what's happening. We've been hearing a lot of different things like Pinterest hates me. We've been hearing that since about 2018. Organic traffic is harder to get or there's no traffic. Uh, my impressions are zero, even though I get traffic on it. There's just a lot of crazy things happening right now. And, you know, we, we listen, we uh, sort of are a middleman between our members and Pinterest. And so we take what we hear from our members, take it to Pinterest, and then we sort of uh, come up with what everyone's saying on both sides and present it to you guys so you can have more information and yeah, you know, just just have a better informed strategy going forward with Pinterest, and things have changed. I will I will uh, preface that with things are different, things are oh, weird. Good, good. I'm well. I'm so glad to hear that because so often we hear from everybody. No, there's nothing wrong. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll get better. It'll be fine. And I believe that. Like especially with the pandemic, I was like, yeah. okay, so there's a pandemic, and so April twentieth, twenty twenty everything stopped mm -hmm. whatever but i'm like it doesn't i i can't anymore i can't just blindly follow i want some information about what would work and what isn't going to work oh yeah and even in their um their their 10k i think that they put out for investors they said we're probably going to see a drop in traffic for Pinterest overall, once people start going back to work and going back outside and not just looking and not just for the, summer bomb, the real yeah. bomb. Yes. So <laughs> all of this, let's just put that uh, put that caveat in there too. Even Pinterest is expecting that with things opening back up, we'll see even more of a loss of traffic, but you can do some things that we've seen okay. that will help kind of navigate that a little bit simpler. Uh, so, you know, we hear this, what is actually happening, and I'll play this real fast. Basically, they want fresh ideas. Oh. I got to start taking notes because I have questions. Okay. Yeah. But so, I but I want to let you do this without like every 30 seconds asking you a question. Uh, it's more fun with the interaction. I oh, think. Okay. So yeah. I, I saw on there that there are pins with that, that like their recommendation is a pin with writing on it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you from my artsy stuff, if I put up a pin with no writing on it, my, um, my views go up, but nobody comes to my site. Yeah. If I put a pin up with writing on it, my view goes down, but a percentage of those people at least will come to my site. Do you know anything about uh, words on it or are we going to get to that? We're going to get to some okay. of that. And okay. so that's, yeah, that's, that's one of the kind of weird things that's changing with Pinterest is there. It's kind of funny. So back when I started at Tailwind, back when it was Pin League, if you guys have been around that long. I haven't been around that long. <laughs> 
that back in 2012, Pinterest was a social media network. That's how we all understood it. That's what we called it. And then they went, hold on a second. No, we're more like Google. We are a search and discovery engine that's visually based. And now they're kind of swinging back the other way and becoming more social. So getting impressions, getting those views, even if you're not getting the clicks, that's going to be important because they went away from followers for a little while and they're swinging back into followers are important. That's one of the, the you know, spoiler a little bit. That's one of the things that we found really okay. decides traffic impressions as followers. And so that's a really big metric to be paying attention to again. <laughs> well, yeah, especially because they said for so long. And and so we're we're starting from today, you guys. We're not we're not going to rehash what was said before, why we did things before, what things came out, because um, two reasons. Number one, it doesn't matter. And number two, companies change and we don't, I don't care. And it's so funny, Melissa, um, you guys get yelled at a lot for Pinterest, <laughs> like for what Pinterest is doing. And I'm like, they're not Pinterest, they're Tailwind. They just schedule to Pinterest. And they work with Pinterest, but they're right. not doing this to us. They're they're nice people. Yeah, we're we're a sounding board for a lot of people, and you know that's fine. We <laughs> understand, and honestly, feedback helps us build better products. So we appreciate feedback, but you know maybe be be nice about it. Okay, so what kind of content works? Tell me. All right. So pins that are getting saved. This is what I mentioned before. Oh, good. We have the actual dates. So from, got to move my little box, February 12th to March 12th of this year. So this is super fresh data. Okay. Uh, we analyzed 20 million pins. It doesn't matter how it was published. It could have been through Pinterest. It could have been through Tailwind. It could have been through another third party. However, it got onto Pinterest. We looked at it and we figured out what was working and we were looking at T paid tailwind members so um <laughs> that could include people who forgot to cancel and don't actually use us for scheduling anymore and people who are using us every single day and are power users so it's a pretty wide breadth of users and so we wanted to really understand you know how this is performing what's working for them including things that we can't actually do like story pins and uh oh well because i we hear go. a lot so i belong to this one group and i love her like she is amazing and she is she loves spending i would say she probably spends 20 hours a week analyzing pinterest and going into pinterest and she tells you in no uncertain terms like you need to manually pin like mm, okay so, you're talking about <laughs> so you need to manually pin and your account will get blocked or not even blocked just it won't work and this that and the other thing and and i totally get that and she's getting i think i've heard her say between a hundred thousand and two hundred thousand pins or hits a month from pinterest God bless, no, but, but no, 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 no. She's been getting that for five years, right? Yeah. This is not a new thing that she started a new account and now it's working. Yep. She's doing the th same thing I'm doing where all my old pins work and my newer pins are struggling. So I have two things to say about that. Um, number one, love her. And if that much of my blog traffic was coming from Pinterest, I would take the time to manually pin, right? Like, God sure. bless me, my whole day would be spent making pins, making pins, but my blog traffic doesn't come from there. It comes from Google and it comes from Pinterest and it comes from all over. And my job is to make content, not to make pins. So I can't have a program where I have to be manually pinning all the time. I have to have a scheduler and, and I've worked for years with entrepreneurs and I, you know, I talked to lots of bloggers and things like that. And most of us have said, it's wonderful to say I should manually pin when I manually pin that just functionally means I'm not pinning because I don't do it. Right. So scheduling pins out even if it's not the most optimal thing in the world is better than never pinning. 
Exactly. Right. Yeah. And with, you know, with what we're saying here and what, with what she's saying and with any guru it's person, in between. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like making a recipe, you know, you follow these guidelines, you have these ingredients and then you do what works for you. Not everyone's tastes are going to be the same. Not everyone's accounts are going to function the same. So while manual pinning works incredibly well for her, that's amazing. And I, if we're thinking of the same person, she's taught a lot of people how to do a great job doing this manual pinning. And I apologize. I have a cat yelling at me. Well, he uh, doesn't want me to manual pin either, I think. Yeah, yeah. She, she's <laughs> going to jump up here and, and tell you what to do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's not every every single person is not going to function the same. Every single account's not going to oh, function the same. So there are girls that love to make spreadsheets of their pins and the last time they pinned it and the one it went to. So number one, I have over a thousand posts on marketing artfully. So I cannot do that. Right. Number two, I don't like spreadsheets. I'm really lazy and I <laughs> like to I love to blog and now I'm making videos and I told you I got to 1000. So now I'm being optimal. I'm being monetized. Um, yeah. So I think it just depends on, and, and it's so funny because I follow, um, I found out about the disc personality profile oh, when yeah. I was at Keller Williams and it's D is drivers. That's me. I are intuitives and they're nice people. Um, they're friendly. They like people. C's are like CPAs, right? They love spreadsheets. They love keeping up with that. And so there are different people in the world. And so I think that that everybody just needs to pick what's best for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, everything is going to be taken with a grain of salt. I think having data, like what we're looking to find right? out here. That's what I want. Yeah, it's important. And it's good to have that so you can arm yourself with the best possible plan. But just know that it's not one size fits all. All right, so we wanted to figure out what are people posting that's working? What's the best for saves, uh, previously known as repins? Does follower count matter? Uh, yes, I'll spoil it right now, it does. Uh, how can marketers improve performance? So <laughs> there's a lot that we went into. Uh, looking at what works, I think this is probably gonna be a little bit of a bummer for a lot of people who I have been on Pinterest and have seen things work before, but the first time a pin is saved is what works the best. So okay, I have a huge question. Is this the first time a URL is saved or the first time a pin is saved? The semantics is complicated. So we have this, <laughs> uh, the, the definitions here. So image creates is what is what Pinterest is looking for now and going forward. The first time a pin is saved, that is the precious moment. That's the best thing that you can do. And that's what we consider an Pinterest, an image create. Okay. Image saves is after that. So any additional versions of that pin that are getting saved are image saved. So whether they're saved by here. somebody else or done through Tailwind. Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, whether, and, and I will say, if you are a content creator, be the first one to put that URL on Pinterest. So important. Your my, bestie, my marketing bestie was like, it doesn't work to save your pins anymore. From now on, I'm going to watch your site and get the notification when you, when you publish a post and I'm going to get there first. I'm like, you can't do that. Don't do that. No. <laughs> I actually don't even know. I don't think it would necessarily help someone else. It would just hurt the creator. <laughs> so, I mean, technically, I guess you can. Uh, yeah. So looking at what people are sharing, I think this is going to surprise absolutely no one. Most of it's static images. 4% is video. 1% is story, which stories are technically still in beta. Uh, I don't think the Tailwind account even has stories yet, which... I still don't have reels on Instagram. The world is weird. <laughs> very strange. So given that static images are what performs the best or uh, what people are sharing, they don't perform the best. They are not performing as well as videos or story pens. So videos compared to a static image get eight times more saves. Stories get 41 times more saves. However, 
Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I don't do stories. I refuse. I don't do them on Instagram. I, I'm like the green eggs and hams of stories. I don't have time to make things more interesting than what I already make them. Why are they saving stories? It's not like they can go and look at like look at them later. Like it's not like they can go and click through and find out more information or find out where to buy something or do any of that. Why? This is part of Pinterest's transition back into being a social media platform. They so while when they were really focusing on being a search and discovery platform, uh, it was competing with Google. It was to send people to another person's website. Now with stories, they want you to get the full story on Pinterest. So you never have to leave. So they're really promoting stories. They're wanting to keep people on the website. They want the full, the full recipe, the full blog post, all of the tips to be done through stories now. And videos are also important for that. Uh, I think you can have a little bit more flexibility because you can get those click throughs. It's just a little bit you know, there's more clicks that you have to do. Uh, so not telling the full story on videos will help mm -hmm. you get those click throughs as well as those saves. And static images are still performing. It's just I get, not as well. <laughs> in, in my, um, so this is really funny. If you look at my Pinterest stats, I don't look at impressions. I don't look at saves. All I look at is clicks. Yep. And so I get plenty, I get more clicks from static images than from anything else. Oh yeah. It's the easiest thing to click through on. So right. it, I think they're also trying to create more of a funnel on Pinterest as well, since followers are so important now. So one thing that stories will help you with and video is getting more followers. Right. Because you're getting more distribution. People are learning more about you. It's that top of funnel brand awareness type of activity sure. and then once people are following you they're getting served to your static pins that they can click through on and go to your website more so that's yeah. i will preface that this is speculation on my part but that's sort of how i'm internalizing this change right well that's what i was saying how i'm internalizing this having been in corporate america um before i became unemployable entrepreneur they want to make money and our job is to figure out how we can best accommodate our needs and accommodate their needs and that's why i said earlier we're not going to look backwards because it doesn't matter we need to know now what's going on and to me what this so when you're saying i'm going to do this or i'm going to do that i'm not going to do stories <laughs> but oh, my cat I had, I, I think he wanted to see the next pin. I had uh, been doing more videos, which I kind of slowed up on, but maybe I'll get back into doing them because videos are easy for me. I'm already doing videos. And so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of video pins, now that my cat already advanced it. <laughs> Ruined the surprise. Wow. She did, but that's okay. She's fine. Um, she'll probably make another appearance and I'm sure my boy cat will too. But, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so they're they're performing better than static images. Um they're a little bit harder to click through on, but again, you can tell a full story using video pins or you can even I uh, so for for a food blogger that I was talking to the other day, I was like, yeah, show 75% of the recipe and then make them click through to your website to get the whole thing. Uh, you can always do stuff like that. And I will say if you're using a video pin, you can just change, you know, have the text go across the screen. That's fine. That'll still improve the distribution because it is technically a video. However, it's maybe not as engaging as, you know, like, Disney, they have all the money in the world, so they can make really cool video pins like this that have a little bit more of a traditional advertising feel to it. So people are interested in looking at it and wanting to learn more. Well, so what I started doing, because I went from I'm going to make five video pins for each of my videos to I'm going to make one video pin for each of my videos. So what I did was because my YouTube video is this way. Mm -hmm. it, it's not big enough to share 
So I just put two pictures underneath it. So the video pin kept playing and then there was a box in the middle. And that way I was able to give, I mean, like those save really well. They, and I've gotten some clicks from them, not tons, but some, mm -hmm. but those save, and if, and if followers matter now, um, like I have a group on Facebook that's not my group. It's a little group I belong to, but I post my videos every day and they're like, we made this based on Tara Jacobson's videos. And I'm like, okay, well, people will start to realize your videos are something they enjoy watching. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're on TikTok or using Instagram Reels, you can repurpose those videos. You want to remove the, the watermarks. Everyone doesn't want the TikTok watermark. So that's that's a tip for Instagram if you're repurposing TikTok <laughs> or Instagram. Just uh, FYI. Yeah, there's there's apps you can get that'll remove the watermark. But those types of images or those types of videos are working really well. So, and that's less work that you have to do on three different platforms if you're on all of those platforms. Same thing for uh, YouTube. I think what you're doing is really smart, just making it wider by adding photos. That's a good way to go about it. Exactly. Okay. And then, of course, these story pins. You know, I <laughs> can't say that I know exactly how they work because we still haven't gotten access to them. But <laughs> for those with access, they're doing really, really well. And when you go to Pinterest, you see them a lot. Uh, so it's kind of telling a story, a small story and a few slides that people want to engage with on Pinterest. So they all, you know, this how to find the perfect tip shade goes through the different tips, the different steps that you can use to find the perfect lip shade. And at the end, there's typically a prompt to follow. So that's a great way to get those followers to get more people interested and tell them sort of the elevator pitch of what you do in different parts of your industry. And they're getting a ton more saves than anything else. They're doing really, really well uh, in getting people to recognize you. They're getting more distribution across Pinterest. And if you have been you know, only sharing static images and you've seen a big drop in impressions and everything, that could be a big reason why if you're not utilizing story pins, if you have access to them. <laughs> Well, I have story pins and okay, so you just said something that really caught my attention. So I make weird collage thingies, right? Like a whole bunch of cats having a party. <laughs> Love it. That's what my channel That's my is. house. Yeah, right? I'd fit right into your house. <laughs> So I could take screen captures as I went doing the video of like, here's a blank. That's what everybody says. They love that I start with a blank page and I end up with a thing, right? So to me, the problem is that I'm not creative. I'm just not like I'm creative that way. But yeah. to like figure out how to tell a story about realtor marketing or whatever, I'm not creative. But even for like a realtor, you could do a story where you're doing a mini open house through the house, just <laughs> taking a picture as you go. And you would upload those pictures and Pinterest would consider those to be a story. Yeah. 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 So you could build a story out of that. Um, that would be actually really interesting to have, you know, take a look at this home for sale in, I'm in Oklahoma city. So, uh, and then has the outside and then you go through and you see the kitchen and the living room and all that stuff. So that could be really neat. And you could repurpose that for Instagram and for other platforms as well. So that could work really well and make less work for you on other platforms. Well, I think that's one of the things, because I would say five years ago, my marketing bestie and I, who talk about marketing exclusively all the time, very fast, right? <laughs> um, we were like, there's too many platforms. Like, I think now the whole idea of, I do think you should get your name on everything, but I do not think that you can accomplish everything anymore. No. You know, when you're talking TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, it goes on and on and on. YouTube, you just can't do it. 
No. But if you can make, if, if you're doing stories on Instagram and you are not doing stories on Pinterest, that's ridiculous. If I'm making a video on YouTube and I have a way to easily make it a video on um, Pinterest, then I really should, I'm going to go back into doing it. All right, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I've convinced you. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we can take a look at what the insights are from the pins that we've seen that have performed really, really well. <laughs> so uh, some of the traits that we've seen on the individual pins, and I believe this is just on static pins, it may not be. No, it's on videos as well. Again, you guys are my guinea pig for this. That's so nice. uh, I, I've been through all of this information, but haven't presented it in this way before. We're not judgy. It, we're nice. Good, good. <laughs> so uh, what we've seen in that time frame that worked, and we're just looking at those pins that have 5,000 saves or repins by the end of January, what we saw really work for those quote unquote viral pins is they had a combination of comments, photos, and reactions. So that's another social cue that Pinterest has started putting in, especially if you have something that's more DIY, uh, a recipe, a craft, a man, toddler thing that you can do with kids, whatever it is, if you can encourage people to show it, how they created your idea, that's a really great way to increase those saves and that distribution. 90% were creates. It's getting back to the semantics that we talked about at the beginning. So okay, so one. what you're functionally saying mm -hmm. is we don't have to play that game anymore where you repit it to this board, you repit it to that board, you repit it to this board. I do think there's a validity to board strength. Yes. Um, not to say that you couldn't put it. To, I'll give you an example. So my crazy cat things. My strongest board is um, is uh, my artsy fartsy board, all my all my primary boards, because my people follow me. I'm weird, yeah. okay? All my people follow me. Um, but if I were to repin it to magazine collage, that is going to give Pinterest a signal that it is a magazine collage, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not to say never to repin to a, a truly appropriate board, maybe yes. three at the most, but it is to say that that you're not going to get much out of that. You're just going to be helping Pinterest to signal what it is, not necessarily to. Um, oh, so I have a huge question. Mm -hmm. Pinterest search. Is it valid anymore? Uh, it is those keywords. The search is still valid. Uh, right. What you what will likely come up in those searches are going to be the original image create. Awesome. So that original pen that was penned by the creator is more than likely going to be the one that surfaces to the top. And um, that'll just continue to improve over time. So it's not it's not a hundred percent science right now. It's going to be more of a mix, but that's the direction that they're going in. But if they know that 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 pen is is a synonym to this pen, right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying we want this pin to be the main pin. They also know what's going on with this pin. And that right. board attribute, that's what I'm saying is just because, uh, I'll give you the perfect example. In Google search, just because they say Facebook likes doesn't matter, mm -hmm. there's a value to it. There right? Is. Like you can't tell me that nowhere in that algorithm do they say ignore Facebook likes because there are things that show up on Google search that if you're just going by, you have to be five years old, you have to have a thousand um, uh, blog posts, you have to have a rank of nothing would ever show up. So there right. are other metrics that we're not seeing and they're never going to tell us. Oh, absolutely not. No, they're all in competition with one another too. So it's okay. I like that. All right. So losing lots of gods. <laughs> so searcher, right? So search is still a thing. Great. Yes. Yeah. And the, the original create that first board, you as the content creator pinning that 
first URL, that first image is so important to really establish that's what this is. So I know a lot of people have uh, their you know, general website board where they pin absolutely everything from their website. That may not be the best strategy for you going forward. You would want to pin that to the board that is most relevant. Which they to... have been saying that for a long time. Yeah. So then to me, that feels like I need to pin it to the magazine collage in this case, and then just schedule it out two weeks later to the mm -hmm. artsy fartsy board. So I have that curated board of all my stuff. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because I pin everything there first. So it's my best board. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're kind of reinforcing that habit loop there. <laughs> right. And we already talked about this one a little bit. 30% were repurposed from, or were videos and were repurposed from TikTok. Uh, I have gotten completely addicted personally to TikTok since quarantine began. It is my main source of battery drain on my phone. I love it. I learn so much. I make lots of recipes. And so if you are a TikTok creator, you might as well be on Pinterest and be getting those, those views and those click throughs on Pinterest as well and on Instagram. Okay, getting into some recommendations here. Story pins. <laughs> People love them. They really help uh, grow your account. They engage with your audience. Uh, they don't have a link, but as you can see at the end of this one, this fresh lemonade cucumber water, it has a follow link. So they are actually encouraging people to actively follow you when they go through that story. Uh, they're really, really great if you have more than 10,000 followers, but if you haven't gotten there, still create them because they're going to help you get to that uh, point a lot sooner. And uh, one thing that I'm excited about as a, as a uh, sponsorships marketer, an influencer marketer, is they'll be able to tag businesses soon. So that means if you have a partnership with a business, you can tag that business as a business partner and have more distribution. My theory is that it'll turn into something like the Brain Labs and Facebook and Instagram, where a brand can pay to promote your content from your account and get a lot of the distribution for you, but they're also getting great advertising out of it. So that's that's my theory on why that's coming soon. And makes me so happy. Okay, so I have a huge question for you. This is a personal question. I told you guys, this is me and Melissa edition. <laughs> I have two pin. Well, I have more than two Pinterest accounts, but I have two Pinterest accounts that I mainly focus on. Mm -hmm. My Tara account that has 14,000 followers, something like that. And my artsy fartsy that has like three. Okay. Okay. Um, if I was going to look to get promoted posts, I would want to grow artsy fartsy because it matches, right? Tara Jacobson is a mismatch to our, to cats having a party, right? Yeah. Um, but that having been said, if I'm not looking for promotional dollars, mm -hmm. then are you saying that I would probably do better to post to marketing artfully as the first pin and then scheduling it to artsy farts? Because they're, they're both hooked together. Yeah. I can post from marketing artfully to the magazine collage. I have them both group boards, you sure. know, thingies, my Bobby. Um, so you're saying that according to this, it looks like if I posted it from my higher follower one, I would do better than posting it from my artsy fartsy. As long as it's I a guess. story pin, yeah. Would, so, that, would, yeah, that, story would that extrapolate to static pins? Do we know or we're gonna get there? Um. I don't know if it does. Honestly, we may get there. I can't exactly remember. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, maybe part of it. Okay, yeah. that's good. I apologize for the small yappy dog. <laughs> I'll be right back. It's just one of those days. All right. If he's going to make the noise, up. he's making the, uh, <laughs> it's Max the dog. <laughs> Pets are just a part of business now. <laughs> right? Hey, once I saw that man who's a newscaster have his wife.
crawl in and grab his child <laughs> on the national news, I'm like, no, guys, I'm in marketing. We're not solving problems here. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. I have. I, I made sure that behind me it looks pretty professional, but I'm surrounded by Christmas decorations on the floor. <laughs> it's all about appearances. Okay, so uh, with story pins, they're really, really investing in them right now. And I think part of that will be related to the business tagging that's coming because it's going to be a revenue driver for them. So it makes business sense for them. It helps creators. It helps <laughs> businesses like us. If, if we get access to that, okay. you bet we're going to be paying influencers to create story pens for us. So ex explain that to me like I'm five and I'm an affiliate for Tailwind. Okay. So in my dream, we work with you. We say, okay, please create a story pin uh, that shows your workflow through Tailwind, how you go from idea to pin in five slides. Tag us as a business partner, and we will put the money behind that story pin to get distribution to your account, to your pins, but we're going to be tagged in it so that we are getting that distribution the data well. and you're getting the data from it so yeah. so when when you guys boost one of my pins it's nice and it's delightful for me but it doesn't necessarily help you as a business owner that much because you don't get to see all the data you can't say oh we spent ten dollars on this pin and we got you know granted you can't follow through the affiliate signups. It's just, we're still not even close to that, but yeah. you can't follow through even to, oh, it got 20 say, you could kind of see some stuff, but not really. Yeah. Where with this, if you're on the back end and you saw, oh, every time we boost one of Tara's silly videos, it works great, mm -hmm. um, but, but Annie's doesn't then you know to be able to say, okay, you wouldn't necessarily say we're not gonna work with Annie anymore. You're just gonna say, hey, that that this is the whole, the more data we have, the better we can do. Exactly, yeah, and it gives brands that opportunity to really understand where their money is going. Well, and, and I think some of us as little content creators forget that some of these things that are done on the big boy level will benefit us yeah. in the long run. Yeah, if you want to get paid to promote Tailwind, absolutely. <laughs> we, we love doing that. And we love uh, sending traffic to our affiliates' websites. That's kind of one of our, our secret sauce things that we do. And it works for us. It works really, really well. And it's, it's something that also allows us to support our members. And I really am very hopeful that the story pin thing with the, the branded, the tags will help us just expand that into not only our, the way we have to do it now is we create a pin on our account that links to our affiliates account so going forward we may be able to promote that pin from the affiliates account so it's coming from them so but i want to talk to the peeps about this because i will not do straight promoted work you know that you've tried to pay me to do promoted yeah. work. I don't do promoted work because I want to have all the creative control of things, right? So I'll I'll do a boosted post. I'll do a hey, they're they're paying a hundred dollars if you write a blog post about this thing. I'm like, fine, I'll get a hundred dollars, and I would be writing about it anyways, so it's no big deal. The difference between that and a promoted campaign is Melissa would come to me. She would say, we have these five things I want you to address. You cannot talk about any other thing in there. You're going right. to have to have it up on your website for a year. You're going to need to do that. Like there's a, it, it's a business relationship, right? It's a contract and you get paid for work tender. I don't like doing those. But that having been said, if this was this, this is even taking away that, hey, we want you to talk about creator. Hey, I want you to talk about this. This is just, oh, hey, Melissa, I have a story pin that's doing pretty good. You want to help? Yeah. And then all of a sudden they help put some money behind it and their advertising budget is bigger than ours. 
<laughs> Thankfully it is. Yes. yes. We, we have lots of money that we can put behind our affiliate content and it works really well for us. So the better it does, the more money we can put behind it. So this is very exciting for me. And we also have a few tips on okay. how to use the story pins. Uh, videos work really, really well. I think they're very engaging. And if you're on Instagram, this looks suspiciously familiar. It's very similar to the way that Instagram works. It has the, I think it's 10 seconds that you can click through all of the stories. And then at the end, you have that follow button. So it's not, it usually doesn't automatically switch over to the next story. Kind of like with Instagram, you automatically go to the next story. You have to actually swipe through. When it gets to the end, you are encouraged to follow that person. So if you want to make sure that the story that you're telling with the story pin is engaging, it keeps people watching until the end so that they will engage with you and want to follow you. So you, you can- know how many pins follow. you have to have to make it a story? You can, you can technically have just one, but you can have one panel is what they call it. So the, the little thingies up here, that's the different panels. But what we saw is that you need to use more than one. Right. So at least have two. And then your third one will be that follow. So, so you're having some transition mm -hmm. from something to something else, and then they'll automatically add the follow one. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So the start to finish, uh, the, what you were talking about with the, the cat party and showing the blank page and the transition to the full cat party, that would make a really good story pen. Right, right. And, and so you then, said, though, that video would be good. So even if I did the last one as, let's say, a 10-second video, that could be a fun last one to keep them watching, and then it would bump into the follow. Yeah. Yeah. Pinterest automatically adds that, so you don't even have to remember to <laughs> include right. it it's there, which is great. And follows are really, really important. Uh, so with the video pins, the crazy thing, I don't think about going to Pinterest to watch videos, but there are more than or almost 1 billion videos per day on Pinterest. They're driving traffic and they're doing really well for those accounts that have fewer than 10,000 followers. So story pins are performing better for more than 10,000. Video pins are doing really well for people with fewer than 10,000 followers. Nice. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. <laughs> no, I love that because a lot of the people who follow me, their their job isn't wrapped up in Pinterest. And so they're not ever, it's kind of like Instagram. I'm never going to get to 10,000 followers on Instagram because I'm not trying. Right. Right. To get the swipe up feature. And they're like, no, 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 get it. No, I'm not going to put in the time, <laughs> energy, and effort required to get to 10,000 people just right. so you can swipe up. So for me, this feels really good for my peeps. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, with video pens, people are creating a whole bunch more. There's a lot more search and people are watching a lot more. So this is how it currently is. This was actually as of... Uh, 2020 so we can only assume that this is gone up yeah in the past year and they are actively investing in it and since our analysis was in 2021 we know that this is still working even though these well stuff i truly believe that that and i i've been saying it for years it's gonna go there are times that you want to be able to read you're at the um you know your kids volleyball game you don't want to be sitting watching a video but you're scrolling right. and reading and looking but if you're tick tocking my children are tick tocking i'm watching youtube while i'm doing something the world's going to video oh yeah yeah, yeah and even with video if you add a uh, the the transcript on top that works really well too yeah because you can be quiet yeah oh there we go Okay, and then of course, images. We know that they're still performing. They're just not performing as well, but you can still get traffic. It's still the easiest way to make content for Pinterest. Uh, so this quote here, the best thing you can do is create the most inspirational, engaging new content that you've ever made and pin that. 
We're seeing that creating multiple images for that fabulous new content will help you get to that, get that content to a broader audience. Second best thing you can do is create new images for amazing existing content, but make sure they're different and you're making them in a way that appear in new searches. So we talked about search earlier. And one of the best things you can do is sort of think about your single piece of content on your website that you're trying to promote, what the different audiences are, who's gonna be interested in different things from this website. And one of the things that Elisa came up with that I think is absolutely genius is if you're if it's a blog post, look at your headers in the blog post. Right, oh, because honey, I do this all the time because I, you know, Number one, if I write a blog post for realtors or Etsy sellers, and let's say Etsy sellers, and it's about uh, taking product photography, right? Mm -hmm. That'll work for the handmaids, it'll work for the digital product sellers, it'll work for the craft, you know, supplies, but each one of them wants to know that it's for them. Yeah. I do not have time to write three blog posts for each of them, but I can put a pin out with the SEO that says how to do product photography for craft supply sellers, how to do product photography for, you know, and so then is that going to be as powerful as that first one? No, that first one, because we've known this for a while. I don't know if you guys have known it for a while, not Melissa, but who's <laughs> watching, uh, breaking the fourth wall, third wall, some of the walls. Um, but uh but 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 i've known that right like the first pin you pin is the best pin but that does not mean that you will not show up in search and i show up in search for lots of things like my poop so i have a i have a, a blog post about how to clean up poop and it's so funny because my mother-in-law has dementia which is okay. not funny right yeah. but i just wrote about it in a funny way i'm like this is a thing i had and it's, it's reality it's reality and i've had people email me who have people who living with them with cancer yeah. people living them with all these different things and they're like number one thank you so much for the good tips and then second they're like thank you for being so funny about it mm -hmm. so i could literally make a pin for every kind of caregiver and say okay this is how you deal with uh home-based caregivers for cancer <laughs> so getting used to the clicking here yeah so <laughs> I, that's exactly right and that's what we've seen work with the static images is target a new audience like the pins over here those are all going to the same url but we're targeting different things we're targeting and and, and you may not say it but i'm gonna say it so those were made with create in about five minutes because what you can do is you can upload your pictures and then you can type your headline and then you say save that one and then you type your headline you say save that one you type your headline you say save that one and all of a sudden and you and and Alyssa and her team designed those and I don't have to design it and it's amazing create yeah. oh yeah oh we'll get there okay good yeah claiming your site is another thing if you haven't done it already it's kind of one of those duh it's one of the first things that right? Pinterest guru is going to tell you to do Claim your website, dang it. We, you want that to show up no matter who is pinning from your website. That little follower button is gonna pop up if you have claimed your website and Pinterest knows, okay, this URL belongs to this account. I'm gonna connect them even if it's not the same person that's sharing. It. That's what made Rebecca so mad because my followers were going up and hers weren't because she was sharing my stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's just giving you free advertising at that point. Oh, we work together all the time, but that, like, she was the first one to tell me. She's like, I don't get any credit for anything anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's somewhat technical, but it's not that big of a deal. And I know a lot of like WordPress has a built in. I believe Squarespace has a built in. And they're, they're covering most of the internet. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So definitely worth doing, 100% do it. Uh, also start to think about different places that you can grow. I know we talked about earlier, you can't be on everything, but you also shouldn't just be on one thing. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. This is rented space that we're living on in all these different places. 
So you need to sort of have your, your eggs spread out and make sure that you are not just focusing all of your time and attention on one thing, because you can easily repurpose your content that you're creating across different networks. Uh, and another reason, a, a selfish reason why we are including this is because we already have Pinterest and Instagram support. We're making our tool more, uh, make more sense and including it and in for both Pinterest and Instagram, if you sign up with a new account, it's all one price. And we're adding Facebook coming, I believe this summer, what? later this summer. So we'll have you Facebook. You know this is public, right? Yeah, I, I got I the go ahead to talk about it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. That so we'll have awesome. some support. Okay, it's, so the reason why I care, you guys, because I picked Loomly, which is delightful for Facebook. Um, the reason why I'm excited is not because Pinterest or Tailwind is doing some amazing, oh, they pin it better than anybody else or share it to Facebook better than anybody else. It is 100% because the stats that you get from Tailwind because they're tracking how you pin it, um, I'm gonna always say pin it, how you share it to Facebook, which ones worked best, when they were published. Um, it's just the, the data that you get from Tailwind is just so much better than anything that you can, can get on the native platforms. Right, yeah, and right now we do have, you know, share to Facebook and you can optimize it for Facebook, both with Pinterest and with Instagram, but we're adding more Facebook specific. Um, so we're, we're expanding create into Instagram and into Facebook. Yay! It's, there's a lot of exciting things coming and so we're adding a lot more support because we know that we can't depend just on one platform. Therefore, our members can't just depend on one platform. Oh, this is great. Because for like the the Instagram, you could do the square and then do the square on the Facebook too. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and what we're, our, what we're calling multi-network create internally right now, I'm sure we'll have a better name for it coming forward. Uh, but what you'll be able to do is create, use create to make a pin, Use create to make an Instagram post and a Facebook post. Thank the sweet baby Jesus. Yep. So it'll all be there. You'll have uh, the scheduling capabilities that's coming in the future. Uh, this is a sneak preview. So that's just, yeah, it's a very exciting thing that we have coming and why. So we will be doing another <laughs> one of these when that comes out. But so the reason why this is, why create is so cool because I also use another one for my videos, another like pin builder type thing. Right. And so I don't mind using a couple of different things, but the beauty of that is once I make those pins, I download them to my computer and then I go over to Tailwind and I upload them or I go to the scheduler and I upload them. And sometimes I forget and all this and that. So with Create, which is um, this thing in Tailwind, where you put your stuff and, and it just automatically does it. You can see it in real time. You can change all your stuff. You can see if your picture looks good. You can change out the colors. You can do all this stuff. When you hit submit, it goes to your scheduler. Like there's not yeah. this in-between thing that, that I just have many points of failure, right? <laughs> Yeah, and so we know you know, diversity is important. And oh, I'm so excited about, about that. that. Yeah, and because it, I it, get more, I get more traffic to my website from WhatsApp than I do from Instagram. Oh, wow. so, <laughs> Rebecca's like, how? How could you get more traffic from WhatsApp than Instagram? So this will make it so that I'm going to be doing my Instagrammies better. Well, and Instagram traffic is very hard to track because unless you have a UTM, it comes through direct traffic. Right. It's crazy. So yeah, we have a we have a tool for that too. So <laughs> haven't checked this out for Instagram. You didn't tell no. me there were secrets. There's secrets. That's why I was a little frazzled when I joined the call. I'd just been on a call with uh, my boss talking through everything. Like, ah, we have so much to do. <laughs> but it's exciting. I'm glad you're busy. Me too. 
<laughs> it's job security for me. <laughs> Another thing is to consider advertising. It's the way of the future. It's, you know, they have shareholders now they have to answer to. So it's going well, so, to be. So for, for me, so for the Etsy people with a high dollar value item, mm -hmm. absolutely easiest thing to do. You can say, you know, if, if you're selling a $150 item and you're spending 1750 customer acquisition, do that all day long, do it more and more, yep. spend as much as you physically can. A lot of my people though are spend, selling things that are 10 to even $90, mm -hmm. like then you're really starting to go, you need to be watching that because you could be paying to acquire customers. Now, if you're building your email list, right. then you can offset that because you have the ability to talk to them. But I can't tell you, Melissa, how many people have said to me, I have this email list and nobody ever buys. If you have an email list and nobody ever buys, do not pay to advertise to get more people on your email list right yeah, right that that is not a thing so i would say for the majority of my audience yeah, email me tara at marketingartfully.com and i'll give you like tell me what you sell tell me the price point it's at and i will um be more than happy to let you know whether i think you should advertise and then i have a great gal i can refer you to if you want to take a course and find out more so yeah, and it's it's definitely not for everyone. And I think, again, this is my dream scenario. And I think it'd be great for bloggers. If Pinterest opens up the business tagging, then you can create ads, but someone else is paying for them to be distributed. Exactly. So if I'm doing a Sizzix die, they don't mind spending 25 bucks to sell more of them. Sure. Where for me to spend 25 bucks to send people to a blog post, my ad revenue isn't high enough. Like we exactly. way back in the early days of the internet, I used to do that. The, um, oh, what's it called when you have the difference in it? We used to do that all the time. We could spend like five cents on an ad on google to get to google mm -hmm. and then we could make 10 cents over here well that doesn't work anymore yeah yeah there, it's Hi, you have to be very very attentive to your roi yeah and and what's working and don't <laughs> don't buy ads around christmas time unless you know you're going to make a lot of money yeah then and honestly for any sellers out there if you're going to be advertising, you should be advertising in October, early part of November, and then cut off before Thanksgiving, because the big brands have way more money than you have ever begun to imagine. And your ad revenue will not go as far. And if you start advertising again, January 1st, you are going to see the lowest ad rates you've ever seen. And you're going to be like, it's free to advertise. Yeah. <laughs> Timing, timing definitely makes a difference with advertising. So you don't have to, but depending on your what industry you're in and what your price point is and what you're looking to do, you can consider it. Okay, so another thing that uh, the rumor mill is all about, what about Tailwind? Is Tailwind effective anymore? Uh, should I be using it? Is it actually hurting me? And no, it's not. <laughs> of course, I think you should still be using it. Uh, and it's not going to hurt you. It's going to save you time. And we've actually seen that the data does not support this idea that Pinterest or that Tailwind is actually hurting you. So uh, looking at fresh images, we didn't see a difference in pen engagement, whether it was published through Tailwind or published directly onto Pinterest. And so I that's haven't that. either. And I tested it. Yeah. And a lot of people try do tests, but they're using the same image published different times and comparing the same image that they put onto Pinterest first and then publish through Tailwind. It's like, no, that's not, that's not, that's not apples to apples. <laughs> at no, all. What I did was for a week I published, I uploaded directly to Pinterest. And then the next week I uploaded through Tailwind and they're like, just because I'm doing a blog post a day, sometimes mm -hmm. I can do that. I just have lots of things that I could publish. 
And there wasn't a difference. I mean, there was a difference in the number of views um, as far as content, right? right? So I get better content views on realtors. I get better content views on Etsy. Um, so, so kind of, you know, sifting through that, there wasn't a difference. It wasn't like, oh, I pinned manually to Pinterest and I got 10 times more, nor was it I pinned to Tailwind and I got 10 times more. I just got about the same amount as I always get. Yeah. And that's Pinterest has said before that there's no like data difference between going through Tailwind and going through Pinterest. So it's, it's essentially the same. You're just saving a little bit of time by being able to schedule pins through Tailwind and not having to constantly be on and publishing. And we've oh, even- That wasn't a problem, I just didn't publish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not publishing, that'll definitely see a, a decrease. That's more of a problem. Yes, yeah, and then with the uh, pins that were published directly to Pinterest, I think you'll probably have a cat coming. Okay, she's gone now. <laughs> <up. laughs> All right, we actually saw a slightly higher performance for Tail and Saves, it's not a ton, 15%, but people are saving those pins more than if they were directly published through Pinterest. And this is just, just focusing on saves. That's the metric that we chose to look at because there's correlation there between saves and click-throughs. We don't have full click data, which is why we didn't focus on that, but that is something that we're looking into. And so saves is a good indicator of what, uh, how these pins are performing. So I could, I could tell you why that would happen with me. Sure. Okay. As I'm sitting there at Tailwind getting ready to, and I'm functionally working on my marketing, right? So mm -hmm. I'm doing five different ways to approach the same product, different images, things like that. I'm crafting maybe a little bit. I'm tweaking the description. I'm doing all this, that, and the other thing. And I'm making a concerted effort to put it to the correct board to do all this and that. Right. right. I'm just in that mode mm -hmm. of working on my marketing. It, when I was manually pinning, number one, I was emailing them. Like I, I have my notes thing on here. Oh, yeah. So I'm writing my notes <laughs> and then I'm going to Pinterest because I can't do it on my computer because I'm never near my computer when I'm supposed to be there. And I can never remember which one I've put up. Right. Right. And then I'm going to Pinterest and I'm going back and forth to my to my I'm not doing anything finessey. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just trying to get through that process before I have to go pick up a child at the, you know, at the vet. I was yeah. going to say at the vet. I was at the vet today. I didn't take my children there. I took my dogs. <laughs> Tempting <laughs> though it may be, I'm sure. <laughs> right? But I can tell you that's why it would be for me because the thought that I put in when I'm actually doing work and scheduling and doing all that, that kind of strategic marketing planning is much different than when I'm trying to squeeze it in because I haven't pinned for three days and I have to get something out. Oh, of course. Yeah. And so that, you know, getting in that marketing mindset, being able to save time, there's still really good non, uh, metric related reasons to use tailwind and then also we saw that there's good metric related reasons to use tailwind well i could i could see but when i saw that i thought the, my first thought was oh they're just saying that and then i'm like wait a minute i can guarantee <laughs> you that my pins are better just my pins the content of my pins mm -hmm. my seo my right. targeting to the right board all of that is better when i'm doing it ahead of time rather than on the fly when I have a second. Exactly. Yeah. That's how normal people I'll say use Pinterest. They're just using it on the fly and searching. And that's, you have to be a lot more strategic than a normal person. <laughs> right. Yeah. We also have a really cool thing that people smarter than me created where we can look at your account and analyze what percentage of saves, the image saves versus image creates you have. And that'll help you to understand what your mix is and where you can make those improvements. So if you want to see that, just shoot us an email at help at tailwindapp.com. Tell us your username, uh, maybe your email. Well, you'll have, I guess we'll have the email if you're emailing us. No, but give us that like for mine, it's, all my emails come from Pterodactyl, but all my sign-ins are Terra. So make sure 
you tell them your your tailwind sign in email. Yes. Yeah. And so that'll give us enough information that we can go look at your account and say, okay, you're doing a great job. Uh, maybe here are some tweaks or you've been saving this pen from 2013 every day for the past seven years. We can give you a lot more information. Okay. So we know things are weird right now. Things are hard. You know, 2020 really dealt us a lot of issues and to have Pinterest coming at us, it's a lot as well, but we're here to help. And we're trying to build these tools that, that help you do everything. So Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, create, we want to be your one-stop shop for everything from, all right, I've published my post. I have my new product. I want to rejudge this old URL. I'm going to put it into Tailwind and everything from creation to publication can happen within Tailwind. So that's everything that's coming here. We have scheduling, we have image creation. And you said by like the end of summer at the latest. <laughs> I'll say end of summer right. and cross my fingers. <laughs> so, so the beginning of summer and I get to be in the beta room. Yeah, we do have a beta for the multi-network create starting <laughs> in May. Yay! I have been promised that it is starting in mid-May. <laughs> so you can get access to that very soon. Awesome. And well, that's make stories. For me, look at that smart schedule with all the different things. So for me, this, all kidding aside, this truly is going to be a help because like I said, Right now, I use another scheduler. I didn't pick them. Like they're they're accomplishing what I want them to accomplish. They're they're fine. Um, that having been said, hitting Facebook, Pinterest. Oh, I have to tell you a funny story. Hitting Facebook, Pinterest, and uh, Instagram will be the majority of my stuff. So two years ago. I stopped posting to Twitter, except for like as the most throwaway thing, because yeah. I had 108 hits from Twitter in the year. In like 2019, I had 108 hits all year. I was like, no, no, yeah. I just can't. And LinkedIn doesn't, I mean, this, this is what we were talking about. You pick, if you're a LinkedIner, then this isn't going to help you that much. But if exactly. you're doing Instagram, you're doing Facebook, or you're doing Pinterest or any mix of that, which is kind of where I'm at, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. So that's that's sort of what we're trying to help with and helping that diversification. Um, I'm personally not a fan of Twitter and LinkedIn. That's not why we didn't use it. Not, every, <laughs> not on everything's about you. Yeah. <laughs> But it makes me very happy that I don't have to turn into a Twitter or LinkedIn marketer as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, we have a bunch of amazing things coming. You'll be able to do stories, not publish them because Instagram doesn't let us, but you'll be able to make stories in there, schedule them, get the notification, all of that good stuff. It's it's going to be your one-stop shop for after I hit publish on my, my URL to, I want to analyze how this performed on social. Nice. That whole overarching thing for you. Our, our, um, what we're playing with is being, what is it? Your marketing team. Where Tailwind wants to be a marketing team for people who don't have marketing. Well, that, I mean, like truly for, so for me, everybody who knows me knows I'm a graphics nut. I love doing this stuff. I love analyzing everything. Like I'm a marketing nut. But I've worked with thousands of entrepreneurs. And what I can tell you unilaterally is they're not marketing nuts. Mm -hmm. They just want to do their business. Yeah. They just want to be able to do their business. They know they have to do marketing. They want it to be easy. They want it to be fast. They don't want it to be hard. And this is like, I'm, I'm super excited for me, but I'm super, super excited for my peeps. Yeah. So there's a lot of exciting things coming. If you haven't signed up for Tailwind yet, make sure you do. Sign up uh, yeah, through my link. I'll yeah. have a link here. Make sure to use Tara's affiliate link. Down below. And even if you don't, I like we have I have a great relationship with Tailwind. I really enjoy them. We've done lots of things together. This isn't a company that I'm like, I was telling Melissa earlier. I don't talk to people anymore. I don't, I just don't, I don't have to do podcasts. I don't have to do 
summits. I don't have to do anything anymore because now I make pictures of cats. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Melissa is truly somebody I've enjoyed working with for years. We've done lots of things together. They've always done what they said. They've always supported my people. I've never had anybody complain literally about Tailwind as a company. I've had them complain that they're not getting uh, views from Pinterest, but like I sure. said, that's not Tailwind, that's Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's so great to hear. And it's, we love our members. We, like, I love coming out and doing things like this and getting to know our members on a personal level and really learning about what their struggles are. That's where we get these ideas to build our products. So right? tell us what that, you want. That's what Creator <laughs> look like when you have when it pulls it up to four. Yep. So this okay. is what you'll be able to do. Uh, feed posts, stories, Facebook, pens, all sorts of things. Uh, with the new pricing plan, we'll have if we'll have a, a true freemium model where you can schedule X number of pins per month and create X number of posts per month. Uh, and then our pricing plans will include both Pinterest and Instagram rather than by account. Nice. So just so you guys know, this looks like stuff I've used in the past where like you get this one look and then you can just pick this literally what will happen is it will go down and the next ones will be a different layout and the next ones will be a different layout and you can just pick and choose which ones you want and see over there where it says be your own stylist so if this is the first one and you're like be your own stylist and then you want to do one for um the perfect summer cocktail dress yes. all you do is you retype it in the title text it will change it through all of them you pick that one then you retype the thing. That's what I was talking about before. I changed the fonts too, because mm -hmm. you can, there's a little drop down font thing. You can upload your own if you're on a certain level. I don't know what it is, but I use different fonts and it is so fast to make pins. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we like to think of it as, you know, you're starting from 95% done. You may have to take, make a few small tweaks, move stuff around a little bit but you're saving a ton of time and that's one of the things i don't know if that's in here oh yeah here we go oh here we go <laughs> takes less than two minutes per design in tailwind and then if we compare to other drag and drop design tools that will not be named it takes a lot longer so you're starting from almost done which is a really really helpful place to start <laughs> so i truly adore making pins like i don't mind the other ones like I have, I'd say 30 templates in different folders, depending on what I'm doing. And then I have like, I don't know, thousands of photos up in there. And like, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I find myself going to create more when I want to get stuff done. When I want to play and be a marketer, I go over there and I make beautiful pins, but they don't, but the, the, the time to value isn't there anymore. Exactly. Like years ago, it used to be that if you made a beautiful pin and you changed your font and you had curved text and you had this and that, you could guarantee that you would get a better return on your time investment by getting more clicks. Yep. That's just not how it works anymore. No, and it used to be you had to have your pin design. Oh my God, that I never got that. And now that's absolutely not the case. Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I never got that. I mean, I love like there's, um, I don't know if this is how you say her name, but there's a marketing girl named Re Rebecca Radish. Oh yeah, she used yeah. to work a good one. I love yeah. her. She's awesome. And her pins were all orange. And mm -hmm. like, you could look and see a Rebecca Radish pin. And I'm like, okay, but if the content that she was talking about was at the time LinkedIn or was, mm -hmm. you know, um, oh, what was it, Periscope or whatever, you know, yeah. it didn't matter that it was her. I mean, you might have gotten a tiny little bump, but I was just looking for content about a certain thing. So right. I've never been. Like I like fonts. I think that pick some fonts that you like, but more so it's for an aesthetic. Like I want it to look like something or it's for an ease of use. You're not going through. I have like, 
I'm like 3,500 fonts. Right. Honestly, I've bought that. Like I've been buying fonts for years. They're so I fun. Use, I use 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can still brand your pens, that logo and your URL, but however yeah. you want to brand it, you can still do that. It's just, they don't all have to look the exact same anymore, which is yeah. great. No, you want to think about the person who's going to be seeing it and what they want. Think about my, my daughter had a baby. And so say you're a pregnancy site talking mm. about breastfeeding, you don't want that pin to look the same way as you do about an investment banker talking <laughs> about like, just no. No, yeah. <laughs> and so you can do that a lot faster. We have some kind of funny uh, I love people him. here. <laughs> so clean your house in 14 minutes instead of two hours. Mo in seven minutes is a one hour. Basically, you're saving lots of time. That's what no, we're trying no, no. to do. It doesn't take me any time at all to do my laundry because my husband does it. Oh, oh, you have trained him well. I, I didn't train him. He's just better at it. Ooh. Oh, that's what I need to tell my husband then. He's just better at it. Oh, I just would leave it in the laundry for like a couple of weeks and then they got mad. <laughs> that would drive me crazy more than my husband. I need to find something that I can put on him. Anyway. <laughs> Not only does it create safe time, it actually improves your safe results. So we saw that uh, pens use, that were made using Tail and Create saw 373% more saves than just resharing your content. So making okay, that new so image. Let me, let me ask this. What you're saying mm -hmm. is, so with this, with Create, say I'm making five pins. Mm -hmm. You have your magic pin. So you have your first pin. Right. That doesn't count. Nothing Correct. counts because it's the special pin. Magic, yeah. The other four pins made with create do better than repinning for that same pin that you made one time without changing it. Correct. Cool. That makes yeah. sense. Because so, you're, you're going to different, you're going to different audiences. You're attracting different people. Some people like flowers, some people like dogs, some people hate cats, you know? Yeah, yeah. you just have more of an ability to potentially attract people. And, and so you have all those images in there. So like, if you're going to morgue file and you're going to all mm -hmm. these places, number one, there's a lot of image. Uh, this is like my soapbox, I'm getting up. <laughs> a lot of those places have stolen copyrighted images on them as a business owner the first time you get caught using a stolen copyrighted image it's six hundred dollars if any Ooh. of you are social media managers it's ten thousand dollars if you make a pin for your client and do it oh okay. man okay in tailwind they have images that you can use that are guaranteed copyright okay and so that way you don't have to worry. Plus you don't have to be going looking. You can just do a search for flower. It's going to bring up a whole bunch of flower images. You pick your five flower images, you go. Yeah. And when you put in your URL that you want the pen to point back to, if you have images on the website, we it sucks it. them in. Yep. So you don't even have to like download and re-upload. They're all there already. So it's they're really effective to and create. I, I, <laughs> hopefully this hasn't been too big of a catalog, but I got to I got to pump up the company and, and talk about how great Tailwind is because this tool is just pretty amazing. And I think with all the noise that's been out there about the drop in traffic and, you know, Pinterest isn't working as well. People get caught up in that and don't focus on what is actually working now. Well, not only that, they don't focus on the fact that a lot of times it's your creative. It's the fact you haven't created new blog posts. It's the fact that you aren't making new images. Like right. there are so many metrics that you can't keep track of what's going on, number one. And number two, I, I truly believe so many people are living in the past and going, but this worked, but I used to, but this could. I mm -hmm. wanted to go back to that way. And for me, I'm like, okay, if Melissa says put up five pictures, I can do that. It's no big deal. <laughs> like, and try those things, right? Because we can't even do this. 
you promoting stories is not self-promotion. You can't you less. can't schedule stories through there. What Tailwind did was they just wanted to find true data about information, especially from their own users, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so this is not comparing to manual pinning, though, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, some of it. Some of the pens oh. were pinned manually, so it's a mix, but it's going to be likely just because we were looking at paying members, it's likely right. going to be a majority of Tailwind pens. Yeah. So, so for me, I mean, I just, that's the thing. I wanted to be able to talk to you. I didn't want to, I can watch a presentation from anybody. Right. But like, I got my questions answered and I think that my son did not log in to his class today. He already told me, um, but I thought it would be super fun for us to talk about some of these things. And whenever we talk, I get the, like, I get more information from you about like how Tailwind and Pinterest thinks of things. And then when you get to talk to me, I get to tell you some of the creator stuff and what yeah. we're thinking about doing, so. No, it's a, it's a win-win for everyone. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, so if you have other ideas on how we can help, you can definitely do that, but. Yeah. I thought this was great. I just wanted, I wanted to get the chance because Rebecca, my bestie, my marketing bestie, most of my peeps know her. Um, we have said over and over and over again that the return from social media is not as great as it once was, right? right. So back in the day, it paid to post eight times a day to Facebook and to be spending <laughs> two hours a day in there talking to your fans. And it's, it paid to you know, be scrolling on Instagram and doing things like that. Now, as a business owner doing marketing, you have to be on these channels, if not for the fact that they assume you're closed if you're not. Right. You just do. That's, um, yeah, that's where I check if places, you know, are closed on holidays or something. I go to their social media platform rather than their And website. if it hasn't been updated in six months, you're like, oh, I wonder if they're okay. Yeah. Are they okay? Um, but I do think that you can do marketing. You can, if you're targeting, okay. So for me, if I was going to do Instagram, the only reason I would do Instagram is to get promoted, um, money mm -hmm. is that's where all the companies go and look and find the creators and do all that. But if you make it super easy for me to post to there, Might as well. not? yep, may as well. Yeah. And if you can get all the scheduling done in one go, saving That's time. The thing. I mean, it just drops in there and, and I do go in and I change the, well, you can change the headline. Sometimes I forget to change the headlines. You can change the headlines when you're making them, but sometimes if you forget to change the headlines, you can change them over here. And uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, I'm not like, I don't, I don't care if you buy Tailwind. Uh, I am an affiliate for them, but I have, like I said, I've used all different kinds of ones. I just like this one because it's fast and easy. Yeah, I do care if you buy it. But <laughs> I want to, I, I would like a paycheck. So <laughs> but, I do care if you buy Tailwind. I mean, I don't work on commission, so it's no. not that big of a deal. No, that's not, no, that's not what we're saying. Well, yeah. of course, but, but. As I said, I have not talked to anybody this year. I can say that for a hundred percent sure. And I haven't talked to anybody. Like, I just don't, I don't need to anymore, which is a blessing. Like I, I was writing my newsletter for tomorrow because now I have a goals problem, right? I made my goal of getting monetized <laughs> on YouTube. So now I'm like, I don't have a goal, which now what? me without a goal is just like a bad idea. I'm just all over the place. Um, but I was writing, you know, like, what, what do you need to do? What are the things you want to measure? What are the things that are actually working? What are your, what are your like number goals for things? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's the being able to track. And like I said, I don't even care if you post through Tailwind, you're still going to get the data yeah. about your stuff. And it is just amazing. It's really good. Oh, and we didn't talk about tribes or Excuse me, they changed it. Communities. I trip um, up all the time with that. <laughs> right? Well, I'm so glad. Like, I'm I'm totally a hippie tree yeah. hugger. I'm a vegetarian. I'm glad you're, you know, took took 
and a look at they they could be looked at as cultural appropriation oh, changed it, and at a corporate level said if this offends one person then that's one too many so it's communities now yeah i will tell you unilaterally that artsy fartsy got into media vine because of the tailwind community caregiver resources oh wow so there's there's about five of us in there who trade back and forth the caregiver resources. And we did um, like, those are the reasons my traffic went up is the Alzheimer's, the dementia, the caregivers. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into Mediavine. It was 25,000 at the time, but still it's yeah. 25,000. Right, um, that's not a small number. That's not a small, now I'm up to 70, um, <laughs> but that but using so just so you guys know what communities is is it's kind of a um a posting swap so mm -hmm. you put your you put your pin in there and you don't know who's going to share it and then you share somebody else's pins now most of them are one for one so what happens for me is like i have this one group that really loves my etsy blog post but they all sell etsy stuff so it's really hard for me to find stuff because I don't want to post Etsy listings. That's not sure. kind of what it, so I'll go through and I'll find a bunch of stuff where somebody ha else has done tizzits on there. You wouldn't know these people. Oh, I do you know, know tizzits. Tizzit. Okay. okay, yeah, that's tizzit's great. on there and another gal's on there who does Etsy. And so on that tribe, even though it's mostly Etsy postings, the three of us are really a, you know, a community. Mm -hmm. that post for each other because we're the only ones that can find stuff that goes with our stuff That's so awesome. you can join them you can join us i don't know you you know the pricing mm -hmm. but like you can join i can join as many as i want yeah um, <laughs> but it really works if you're a new um if you're a new seller if you are a new blogger if you're thinking about boosting your your um pinterest mm -hmm. joining those communities is going to make a huge difference yeah, and, and that's one of the things that we've seen that's been a little bit surprising is that even with these changes and you know, that first pin is the most important and nah, getting, uh, that has not changed anything. Yeah, you still want other people sharing your content that's still sending signs to Pinterest. It may not be quite the boost that it once was, but it's you're not going to get, you know, a ton of traffic from one pin that's just not sort of how it works anymore uh, but that's still important for sending the signals to pinterest you're still supporting your fellow creators as well and getting that distribution and it's well, but still I, do important. Think, I do think as far as because i'm really into algorithms because i'm a nerd right um i do think that pinterest has recognized that as a group we pin really quality content that people pin, that people go to, they come back, mm -hmm. they look for more of our content. So it's not just the volume of stuff we're throwing against the wall. Oh, yeah. It's that we have built a community of really strong bloggers with good quality content. And and so they measure all those things. Do you, mm -hmm. do you click out? Do you come back to Pinterest? Did you find a value or did you click out and go away forever? They don't like that. Yeah. Right. So, so that's the kind of thing with communities that I've really found is that even within the bigger communities, I've found littler communities where I can make my niches work. Mm -hmm. That's really smart. That's a really good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I love Tailwind. So, <laughs> well, it was lovely talking to you and I can't even do the thing where we like say goodbye and then we say goodbye again. I don't know if you guys know that happens. A lot of times we'll say goodbye and then when the Zoom turns off, we say goodbye again and chit chat. I just have to say goodbye because the recording has just to stop. It. Yeah.